Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. One of the frequented questions I actually get asked quite a lot on stream and also in other places is what is the best nation to start with in War Thunder? And the reason is, is I'm guessing there's a lot of new players, uh, obviously over the last few years. Uh, War Thunder itself has had a massive bump in popularity. Uh, it's been growing what seems like exponentially over the last little bit. And I thought I would use this video to try and outline which nations I think are the best for starting in the game uh, when it comes to ground, aviation and naval. I'll also do a little section about the tech trees that I enjoy the most uh, when it comes to different parts of the game. One thing to note uh, before we get into it is just remember I don't particularly play helicopters that much uh, so I can't really give too much insight on them but everything else I am able to. Before we get into which nations I'm best, and if you want to skip to these, you can. I put chapters in the video so you can just go to each area. I'm going to talk about my philosophy of generally playing the game. So when it comes to War Thunder, the things that I focus on is spading vehicles or fully modifying them, basically. And in order to fully modify them, you have to play them enough to be able to get all of the modifications. And normally, if you do that, it unlocks the next vehicle in the line that you're playing. And then you can, you know, go from there. It's something I've been doing recently on stream with the Israeli tech tree, kind of spading one vehicle, researching the next with that spade, and then just keep going over and over again. And it's how I make SL, um, and it's also how I make RP. It works very efficiently, and it works incredibly well. One of the things to also note is I turn off auto repair. The reason for this is because it saves SL, and everybody should turn off auto repair uh, while you are going through vehicles. But generally, what I like doing, and what I've done for many years now, is I try and keep all of my nations equal uh, when it comes to what ranks I'm at. So back in the day where everything was rank 4, I would play America until I got into rank 5, then I would skip to Germany, get them into rank 5, skip to the Soviets, get them into rank 5, and so on and so forth as I went across the tree. Now, uh, I think this generally should be done when it comes to the game, so you can experience all different aspects of it, and also experience all the different allies and enemies that you're going to be facing or with, so therefore it makes it easier for you to work out, you know, what's going on, and uh, how to uh, fight everything, basically. Uh, the other thing to also note uh, when it comes to this idea is uh, what I would personally do if I was starting the game again with all the knowledge I had. I would grind one nation to rank three so I could do the dailies every day to do the battle pass stuff and also to do the events and all of the other nations during the time where I've already done my dailies and when I've done uh, the events and stuff I would then grind the other nations to get them to rank three and then I'd be able to use them for stuff like dailies and stuff like events as well so therefore there is always a reason to be able to be playing different nations and if you kind of hit a stumbling block on one of them you can then switch to another to have a bit of fun. The first nation out of three is America, and the simple reason why is because even though America is one of the largest tech trees uh, when it comes to aviation, ground, and naval, it also is the tech tree which has the most chance of expansion in the next few years. Pretty much every, um, every update, America gets something quite big, whether it's a jet, whether it's a naval vehicle, or whether it's a ground vehicle, and also has an incredibly strong helicopter tree. So they have pretty much everything you would ever want. There's a reason why uh, in a realistic, for, ex uh, for example, for many years now, especially at the jet level, it's been everyone else versus America, because America really does have kind of the, uh, it kind of has the overall uh, fact that it has everything that it needs, so a lot of people play it. It's also not too bad of a grind. Um, when you have more vehicles in a tech tree around similar battle ratings, it means that you can form lineups when it comes to ground realistic and when it comes to naval, and this makes it a lot easier to play because you always have backup vehicles if you die, which are very close to uh, the ones that you know you normally play. 
And also at the same time, they have great cast elements uh, for both game modes as well. Like everything is nice for America because they just have so many options. This does mean that the grind is generally a little bit longer, but if uh, you do what I was talking about in the philosophy area, basically the idea of getting them to rank three and then maybe uh, branching out, that won't be too much of an issue because you always know that you'll have a stable to be able to go back to. They also have some really nice things such as a lot of the Shermans in ground have have access to stabilizers, meaning that you can get used to them pretty early on. Um, and also at the same time, you can pretty much always guarantee the first shot off in, in all of the engagements. The only place that they struggle with kind of at the low tiers is uh, armor. Uh, their armor isn't the best, but the mobility is good and the guns are good. So therefore you can kind of make up for that. They have a great mid-tier lineup. 6-7 is absolutely fantastic. 7-3 and 7-7 are also fantastic for the Americans. And there isn't really a BR bracket where they're weak when it comes to any of their major tech trees. And as I said, they're also the nation which is going to be expanded upon the most. So you know if you're starting America or if you know if you're getting into it, you're going to have the most toys and you're also going to have the most room for future content. It's why it's so appealing uh, to a lot of people in general. It's a really good tech tree. It's very hard to uh, say really a bad word against it. They don't really do anything badly in the tech tree itself, and they have many meta vehicles and many different BRs. There's also a ton of different vehicles, uh, so therefore, you know, uh, you can have a bunch of different experiences, which is quite nice, uh, depending on which tech trees you're playing. But overall, America is definitely the number one when it comes to the new player experience. Germany is also one of the best new player experiences because of the fact that it has a really good early ranks uh, to their ground and also to their aviation. Their naval stuff also is pretty good uh, when it comes to destroyers. Not the best, uh, but definitely very good. And same with their uh, little boats as well. Also, at the same time, uh, when it comes to its ground, they have a lot of auto cannons, which are really good, and they keep getting certain vehicles uh, downed in BR, meaning that they're going to be stronger, such as the Panzer IVs, making it easier to play. In the mid-tiers, you also get some of the iconic vehicles, like the Panther, the Tiger, the Tiger II H. All of these have unique play styles, uh, which make them quite interesting to play, and are also very strong for their BR brackets. And one of the areas where Germany used to struggle was when you used to go from the 7-0 to 9-0 area. They didn't have a ton of stuff. They obviously had the Leopard, but nowadays they have had an injection of light tanks over the last few years. The two Marders, the Puma, and then also stuff like the DF-105 have really uh, brought that area to life for Germany. So making the tech tree much easier to be able to go through and a lot of fun to go through as well. Lineups is not really an issue for Germany at most BRs. Uh, they do have some vehicles that are a little bit rough to play, uh, which is some of their tank destroyers, but that is uh, no different to something like the Soviets, which have a very similar situation. And also they don't have some of the weaknesses of some of the other nations. So their armor generally is pretty good. Um, their uh, gun depression is fantastic. They have very average reloads as well when it comes to their vehicles. And some of the vehicles do need um, a certain play style to them. But overall, uh, they are fantastic vehicles. So I would definitely say Germany is also up there uh, when it comes to ground. The only issue with them that uh, exists right now is in their aviation. We're going through a period in War Thunder's history where Germany used a lot of vehicles from other nations and not necessarily the best stuff from the other nations. Uh, they used, you know, either hand-me-downs or vehicles which were purposely made weaker than their natural company, uh, sorry, their natural country's counterparts. So generally, when it comes to them, uh, I don't think uh, their aviation at the top is tier is in the best uh, place right now. And also from 7.0 to 9.0, it's not the best either. There's a lot of kind of dud vehicles, uh, which are not too fun to play. But for naval, they're in a great place. They have one of the best naval machines in the game, the Scharnhorst. And also for ground, they are fantastic. Aviation, they're a little bit behind, but they will eventually get back up there as one of the leaders. 
The next one is China, and I've always found it weird when it comes to War Thunder because there seems to be a vocal uh, mass of people who are very down when it comes to the Chinese tech trees, and I don't really understand why. The Chinese tech trees in themselves offer a lot of variety in gameplay, and also they offer a lot of tastes of other tech trees, meaning that if you're a new player to the game, it means that you yourself can experience a bunch of different playstyles and a bunch of different vehicles before maybe exploring those options more in the other tech trees. And uh, as a new player, you know, you won't have played a bunch of the other tech trees before, so maybe you won't mind, you know, the fact that a few of the vehicles are similar or the same as other nations' vehicles, which gives you a great platform to be able to understand more about the game if you play China than other nations. Uh, being able to play stuff such as, you know, the uh, early tiers where you get some American vehicles, you get some Soviet vehicles, you get some other nations' vehicles, it pretty much means that you are able in one place to just be able to gain uh, more knowledge about stuff that you fight and also stuff that you play as. And I really think, you know, that's very useful, especially since a lot of the other nations' vehicles, which are seen as meta, or at least close to, are found in the Chinese tech tree in the early tiers. Its only issue, really, is its top tier. Uh, but as a new player, you know, that shouldn't worry you too much, because it's going to take you a while to get there. But it, their top tier is a little bit lacking right now, but it is getting better and better and better with every year or every update that comes along. Uh, the Chinese top tier is so much better than it was a year ago uh, compared to where it is now, so uh, I really think it is worth a punt when it comes to the game itself. A lot of the other tech trees have many issues or weaknesses or issues with lineups. Yes, you can get to like the top tiers faster in something like Sweden, but are you going to have a better time? No, you're not, um, especially as a new player, because you're going to have to come up against so many different obstacles. Well, when it comes to America, Germany, and China, those obstacles are going to be a lot less. And also, at the same time, it'll be uh, better to grind through because you'll get more crew skills while doing it. And also, at the same time, you'll have full lineups, not just from a ground point of view, but also from an air point of view. The only issue with China is the fact that they don't have naval right now, and they don't have helicopters. The helicopters tree we know is being worked on, so I'm sure it'll be here at some point. And naval-wise, uh, there is no word whether they're going to get it or not. So that might be a little bit off-putting to people if they are interested in naval. But then again, as I said, if you are, then you have America and Germany to be able to get you through. And the British naval tech tree is pretty fun as well. And as for my favorite nations when it comes to grinding, it's uh, pretty simple. Italy for aviation. I really enjoy the Second World War propeller planes. They are fantastic to play, and uh, they have no real weaknesses. And since a lot of the tree is made up of them, I had a really, really fun time grinding through them. When it comes to naval, it's America. And the reason is, is they have the best destroyers, which is part of the larger ships that I enjoy. And when it comes to their coastal fleet, they have a fantastic 2-7 and 3-7 lineup, or sorry, 3-0 lineup, which I use for a lot of the events, which are super fun. When it comes to the ground portion, that actually goes to France. Now, France actually has a really, really rough rank one, one of the worst in the game, and used to be even worse than you see it right now. Uh, but it is uh, much better when it goes to rank two and above. The autoloaders are very fun. They have uh, meta vehicles at most BRs. The only area where they kind of struggle is from kind of the 9-0 to the 10-0 area. But once you get those clerks in the top tier, they are really, really fun vehicles. So those are the trees that I've mostly enjoyed when it comes to War Thunder and hopefully gives you a little bit of insight how I enjoy the game and how hopefully you can too. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Merciless Reaper, Jerry Provolt, Mega Dino King, Professor X1718, Orange Tail, Sakoshi Tiger, Teddy, John Ryman, Universe, Eugene's Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, Moxie, B. Young, and Derek R. Barine, Lafouche, and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.